Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be discussing my favorite woods, my all time favorite woods to carve. That's right, today we're talking about all things involving wood. Now, I can't go through every species, of course, in every possible country or region, but I can talk about the basic woods that I'm best acquainted with and that are ideal for wood carving. And yes, I forgot, most importantly, I'll be telling you what my absolute top five favorite woods are to carve across all the boards of, <laughs> no pun intended, well, pun intended, and why it is my favorite wood. And to start this, I wanted to show you, first of all, kind of the uh, way that these woods carve. So I will actually be carving the wood. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a uh, inch and a half healthy knife. This is uh, something that you can order online through the healthy website. They are available. They have a wait time because they're custom made, but uh, uh, they're very expensive as well. So if you can't afford that, FlexCut is another great manufacturer. Uh, if you're on the cheap, uh, they hold an edge well. Helvey's great too. So just find yourself a good quality knife. We'll talk about that in a future video, how to identify a good quality knife. But before we do that, I wanted to start with probably one of the uh, least uh, kind of respected woods in wood carving, but one of the most widely available ones. So that is the pine. And of course, pine is a very general material. There's a lot of types of pine is what I'm trying to say. There's a, it's a very general term for a, a whole category. There's white pine. There's, there's all these subspecies uh, as well within the category of white and yellow and, and red pine. Um, this, I believe, <clears throat> is a white pine. I'm pretty sure that yellow pine is generally deemed as not ideal for carving. So if you can find some good white pine, um, I believe Home Depot sells some white pine as well online. Uh, you can probably order some white clear pine. You know, try to stay away from the knotty stuff, but uh, it's gonna look something like this. This is kind of a weathered old piece, but I'll show you how it carves. It's very smooth. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty buttery, in fact. Um, you know, it's a, a very even cutting wood. The downside to pine is you, you do have a uh, hard and uh, soft winter growth rings, which brings me to my first point here. Um, when you're carving a wood, you're kind of looking for a wood that's homogenous. Now, what I mean by that is a wood that is even all the way through, and the presenting challenge here is the hard growth rings. This indicates the winter growth of the tree, and the winter growth, of course, harder on the tree, it grows more slowly and more densely, and that creates a hard uh, textural experience as you move through the warmer rings into the winter ring. What's fun about this is if you look closely, you can see the dead of winter, right? The coldest part of winter, and as it progressively slows down and speeds up, right? So kind of tell you about the tree and the seasons. That being said, uh, pine, white pine, has a pretty strong, what I call grain presence, again, referring to the uh, extreme differences between the uh, summer growth and the winter growth. And uh, that makes it not the perfect carving wood, but my point is, man, you can really do some nice cuts in uh, a decent quality pine. And so it's not to be forgotten about. I mean, look at this. These are, this is really good control. Um, it's soft, it's easy to work. It's got kind of nice coloration to it. It's great. Moving on to a more commonly carved uh, wood um, is uh, uh, cedar. Now, cedar is, uh, of course, another kind of broad uh, group of woods that, uh, of course, have a subspecies. I'm not the, uh, the expert of wood that uh, you might need, but I can tell you that cedars are also a good um, material to work with. This is, this is a white cedar. Um, white cedar, believe it or not, is actually a little bit stringier than red cedar. And so Western cedars, Western red cedar, aromatic cedar, those are actually really nice to carve. Very even grain texture, very uh, pleasing aroma. You should be careful though, if you're power carving, uh, cedars, they tend to have a strong um, impact on the respiratory system. I recommend you wear really high quality respiration, uh, respiratory mask, I mean, uh, something that has a, a respirator on it. 
is what I'm getting at. So anyway, white cedar, definitely good. It has a fairly strong green presence, but like the pine, it's very soft. And so it almost makes up for the uh, presence of grain. And so, well, you might be asking, what's a problem with grain presence? It just makes it a little bit less consistent when you put the knife through the material. You can feel the stop and go of the growth rings. You can even hear it. Listen. Hear that? So that's what you're dealing with. But a very carvable wood. If you can get your hands on any number of variety of cedars, it's going to generally be fairly decent. A little stringy, probably not the most ideal of carving woods, uh, but uh, pretty decent for whittling. If you're trying to get some, you know, fairly decent detail, but nothing too crazy. All right, moving out of the uh, conifers uh, into the uh, lesser known carvable woods. So you see birch and uh, birch, I believe, forgive me if I'm wrong, uh, experts in tree, but uh, this is a member of the aspen family. And uh, this one has some mold, uh, which creates some discoloration, some spalting in the wood. So again, wear a mask when you're power carving or sawing this material, or at least run a filter in your shop. But birch, I love working with birch because it's very dense, but you can hear pretty low grain presence. It's very even. Now, you need sharp tools, but you don't need, uh, you know, to really worry about grain presence. Look at that nice smooth cutting wood. This is paper birch. Um, to my uh, knowledge, most birches have the fairly even grain. You know, you've got your paper birch, your silver birch, a number of other uh, species of, or subspecies of birch. And uh, some are harder than others, but uh, I know for a fact, paper birch is lovely to carve. Now, this is, yes, I know what you're thinking, a protected tree. Now, I would never cut down a birch, uh, a silver birch especially, but uh, this particular tree died in one of my client's uh, parents' yards and they collected it and donated it to me. So I've got a whole bunch of this. And so if you, you know, if you go to a birch stand, they tend to like to grow together. Um, a lot of times you'll see fallen branches, limbs. If you can get near um, the northern parts of the United States and to Canada, you'll see some paper birch. Um, Again, not the probably the most widely available uh, through you know internationally. Of course, not so much. I don't uh, I don't know a lot about uh, uh, where birch lives. I know I've seen it in Sweden and through the woods in Stockholm. I've seen quite a bit of birch there. But <clears throat> so for those of you in the European countries, I'm not sure if uh, you have birch. Usually, it tends to grow in more uh, cold and northern environments. But it's as you can tell, really great to carve. So if you can find some. Birch, it's going to suit you pretty well. Not a beginner friendly wood though, I should say, because it is hard and uh, you really have to know about sharpening your tools. To that point, another soft wood that's uh, lesser known as a carving wood, but uh, still pretty good nonetheless, is a willow. This is a pretty dry hard piece of willow, but generally uh, willow, fairly soft as a, as a whole category. And, uh, and workable. Huh? Again, this is a really hard piece of uh, willow, but uh, yeah, it does make for uh, decent carving wood. And especially if you can find the wood green, meaning uh, fresh, um, not dried yet. It's gonna carve really well. It's a little stringy, does well with power, uh, just like cedar uh, does, birch does. Uh, they respond well to uh, power tools. So willow, another broad category of uh, woods that are very carvable and uh, of course varies per piece. This is a hard one. So low grain presence on that as well. And moving to our uh, kind of less carved woods uh, for good reason, walnut. Walnut, although uh, it's commonly carved in uh, Europe, is a harder material to work in. And that's what keeps people from messing with it. Of course, similar hardness to birch, a little harder than birch, closer to your maples. Um, of course, there are soft maples as well, which uh, 
I don't have in this video, but uh, maple as a large category of hardwood, if you're in the, uh, North America, and uh, I'm guessing some parts of Europe. Excellent tree, uh, excellent carving wood, very much uh, like birch, just a tiny bit harder, higher wearing. Uh, black walnut is, um, as far as I know, uh, largely kind of divided up in woodworking uh, as uh, kind of two broad categories. You've got your American black, and you've got your English walnut. English walnut, as far as I know, is a little better for carving. I don't remember exactly why, I just remember reading that it's ideal. Uh, I've never really used it, so you um, Brits out there can tell me if you've carved it. But walnut is a good wood to carve if you have a lot of patience and some really sharp tools uh, or power carving burrs. You're gonna find great results in uh, black walnut. Um, again, it's it's hard. So there's a reason why you don't see a lot of black walnut carvings, especially in the beginner realm. So definitely, if you're new to carving, probably stay away from black walnut at first. Okay, now some of my absolute favorite woods, right? Kind of ranking these, if we, if we were to rank them, at the end of this video, we are going to do so. One of my absolute favorites, butternut. Now, I understand you're saying to yourself, Alec, how are we supposed to get butternut? Who gets butternut? Where do you get it from? Well, to be honest, it's pretty hard to come by now because this canker, there's a worm that likes to wedge itself in between the bark, <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, cambium, cambium layer. Am I saying that right? Uh, basically, the, the wood is kind of slowly going extinct and is protected, but again, this is uh, old wood, and uh, it's collected, uh, you know, years ago, and I'm not sure about the laws regarding uh, butternut. Um, I'm sure you can cut it down in some states, in the United States, but I'm not sure where it stands in the rest of the world, but you can just see if I stop yammering. Excellent. Excellent wood to carve. Look at that. I mean, I could just do that all day, but clean, holds detail well, nice grain. The downside is, although it looks like it has a very strong grain presence, uh, it doesn't have that, but the downside is not that, but that it's uh, very contrasty. So if you're doing a small carving with a lot of detail, that grain can distract. But yes, it is true. This is really not... Uh, as pronounced of a grain presence as you would think. It, it looks strong, but it's not showing up on the tool. It's very even. So excellent, excellent wood for carving, which makes me sad because there's not very much of it around, at least in my area. Here we go. Uh, one of our most commonly carved woods. This is basswood. Now, something to note about basswood, it tends to have a interlocking grain pattern. So the fibers of the wood tend to kind of... Uh, intermingle with each other, which is why it's so great for carving. It tends to move, uh, you know, sort of uh, more consistently. So you can go in one direction and uh, and go in another with uh, relative control. Of course, you can see one direction worked better than the other. It was cleaner moving this direction than it was moving in this direction. You get more splitting there. It's just a stable wood. It's soft holds detail well. Now this is under the subspecies uh, or the major species of linden. Linden is available as, uh, well, linden or lime wood in Europe. Again, increasingly hard to come by from what I'm hearing from my European friends. In the States, you know, basswood's fairly plentiful. You can buy it from a craft and hobby shop. You know, Michael sells some little pieces here and there occasionally and uh, that's our kind of uh, craft hobby shop in the States. And uh, random uh, sort of uh, spots online, maybe not so random, wood carving uh, suppliers, stuff like that. But basswood, uh, again, interlocking green pattern, uh, holds detail well. You know, generally speaking, basswood grown in a warmer environment is going to be softer. And this seems to be true of most woods. If, it, if a tree is growing in a faster growing climate, it's going to tend to be a little softer, which uh, is probably better, right? So... At least if you're starting out, don't want to put a lot of effort into carving. Um, 
Okay, you're gonna get, you know, happier. You're gonna have to worry less uh, if you have a softer wood, so. That's basswood. Awesome, awesome wood to carve. All right, let's see. Well, we've uh, basically concluded our uh, kind of little foray into wood. And I wanted to mention uh, another type of wood. Uh, but before I do that, just a little peek at my uh, lighthouse. This is from Basswood, just to show you what you can do with a little whittle project. It was carved from this. Actually, if you search uh, Easy Lighthouse Whittle, it'll come up with my name. But uh, anyway, the wood, it's not really a wood that I really love to carve with is cottonwood, bark. Now, this is a, a very exclusive wood, so I won't devote a lot of time to it because, man, it's sort of hard to come by. And in the, in the in, well, North America, it tends to like the plains regions of the country. And it's, uh, well, it's very dirty. It dulls your knife up pretty quickly. Um, but if you can get your hands on some cottonwood bark, um, you've got your eastern cottonwood bark, which is, of course, on the eastern side of the uh, United States and North, North America. And then you've got your, uh, well, you've got all kinds of cottonwood, but the, the best ones for carving are your plains cottonwood bark. And then you've got your black cottonwood, which, as far as I know, is generally a more northern uh, cottonwood. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but cottonwood will give you some downsides first. It's got a lot of uh, deposits of sand and dirt in it, so that does make it a, uh, a threat to sharp knives. So if you're going to carve cottonwood bark, use a strop regularly. It's very important. So anyway, that's my love uh, of cottonwood is, uh, is great. My love of, uh, of cottonwood has gone back into uh, my early days of carving. So uh, it's very soft, very workable. All right, so you're probably wondering now, if, uh, if I had to rank all of these woods, uh, how would I do so? Well, I'm gonna show you my top five, right? My top five favorite types of wood are as follows. All right, so my fifth favorite uh, type of wood I chose because it's um, pretty widely available. It's kind of underrated and uh, it's just nice to carve it. It feels good under the blade. It's the broad category of cedar. Cedar is really a nice material to work with. I've always enjoyed it. And uh, I recommend even, uh, you know, if you're a beginner and can't get a hold of basswood and you have some cedar around, it's a great way of just kind of cutting your teeth on uh, carving it. It is directional. So it requires a little bit more care than basswood does. It doesn't like to be carved in other directions. So it'll teach you what you need to know about grain and grain presence. But uh, it's my fifth favorite wood. My fourth. My fourth favorite bit of wood I chose because, well, it's even more widely available than the cedar category and uh, tends to be uh, really soft, even softer than cedar. And if you find the right piece, it has pretty low grain presence, and that's pine. Um, pine is a great material uh, and underrated. In fact, I've read books where folks say, you know, stay away from pine. Pine is the bane of the woodcarver. And uh, so for years, I didn't even touch this stuff. But uh, the reality is, it's actually pretty nice to carve. So pine is my fourth uh, choice as favorite woods to use. Third, I chose this one as third. I might have put it at first if it was more available. This is a, a wood that's been threatened by the blight of uh, this particular, I think they call it a canker. Um, and uh, I'm not sure, I think it's a, a worm of some kind of an insect that's attacking it, but uh, it is fantastic. It's soft, low grain presence, beautiful grain pattern, uh, but uh, not widely available. That's why it didn't take the first place. Uh, and that is butternut. Butternut is a fantastic uh, wood to carve. I hope that you can get your hands on some before it goes away. Uh, and I'm not trying to create some rush towards everyone getting basswood, but uh, or sorry, butternut, but it's really a nice material to work with. So yeah, that's my third. My second wood I chose because while this particular subspecies 
not so widely available and actually um, not, uh, uh, it's actually protected. So <laughs> I shouldn't be too uh, excited about sharing this, but it's my probably favorite wood to work with outside of, uh, well, <laughs> well, of course, the number one wood that I chose. So it is uh, the birch category. Now, again, probably not going to be getting your hands on a lot of white birch at the stores. And for good reason, it's protected, at least in Michigan. Don't know about other states or other countries, but uh, that's what I've heard at least. It's great to work with, even grain. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. So no, I don't think it's probably the ideal beginner wood, but look at the, just the way that that knife moves through the material. Um, and that chatter you're hearing is cracks. It's not uh, it's not grain presence, but it has even a uh, grain, low grain presence, um, meaning the winter summer growth rings are not uh, too different than each other. So it just makes for an excellent uh, wood to carve. The birch category, silver birch, um, white birch, all that. I know there are many other types of birch. They all tend to be pretty dang awesome and uh, definitely a great intermediate wood. And I uh, love the coloration. That's another reason I chose it. This uh, white kind of color. I love silver birch where you just have this sort of muted kind of version, almost sort of a papery texture. Not quite as, of course, papery as paper birch, but it's just a picturesque wood. And I love kind of framing a carving with uh, that... Uh, that exterior, that kind of birch line, strange kind of, you know, texture that that birch has. Um, <clears throat> without uh, further ado, I almost just spoiled the surprise. My <laughs> final wood, if you didn't already recognize it, as I almost ruined it, is a very widely available wood in the carving realm. It's kind of bland, but that's kind of why we like it, right? It, it sort of presents itself with... Uh, unlimited options. It's neutral, it's cream colored, it has a low grain color presence and uh, just incredibly easy to work. You may think I'm basic for putting it at the top seat, but I will do so anyway. It is basswood. Basswood is so fantastic to work. It just has this pleasing sound. Listen, It's really soft too. I mean, you'll be surprised if you try to carve other woods. It even sometimes can be softer than certain pines. It's just awesome, awesome, awesome to work with. If you get the chance, you can order some basswood online. I highly recommend it. Basswood has been carved for hundreds of years. If you've gone to your local museum, it's likely that your art museums at least will have a very old European limewood carvings and those are uh, a close relative of basswood so limewood basswood the linden family overall has a lot of great options for carving i guess i'm not aware of anything outside of limewood and basswood within the linden category but i know for a fact that those are both ideal carving woods and that's why they take the seat of uh, my favorite uh, carving woods thanks a lot for watching this guys um, please, if you're interested in wood carving and you'd like to kind of expand your skill set and learn more about carving tools, knives, uh, gouges, all the other tools that go into carving, and specifically, you'd like to learn about projects that involve, well, realistic faces, maybe like this one or like this one, then check out the link below. If you click uh, the description, Right below this video, and I think it's more, the more tab, you'll see the first link there, the blue letters, it's going to take you to the online school, and uh, click that, you can subscribe there, it's how I support myself to make these free videos, and thanks a lot guys, I really appreciate it, see you in the next one. And you can see the videos available on the school uh, are floating by, and uh, there's a lot there, there's a new video added each month, actually two. Two videos uh, but I usually I, I guarantee a minimum of one and most of the time I do more than that but anyway new projects every month all added to the uh, collection you can see them all at any time and uh, yeah so that's it thanks guys